In this Safety Smarts presentation, we are going to focus on National Fire Protection Association, NFPA codes, standards, recommended practices, and guide. We will start with the definition of codes. When a standard has been adopted by governmental bodies and has the force of law, it becomes a code. A standard also becomes a code when it has been incorporated into a business contract. A code is a set of rules that experts in the field recommend people to follow. It is a model. Although it is not a law, it can be adopted into law. A code tells you what needs to be done, but it doesn't explain how it should be done. An example of a code is the NFPA 70, National Electric Code. Next, let's define the term standard. In a standard, the main text contains only mandatory provisions using the word shall to indicate requirements and is in a form generally suitable for mandatory reference by another standard or code or for adoption into law. Non-mandatory provisions are not to be considered a part of the requirements of a standard and are placed in an appendix, footnote, informational note, or other means as permitted in the manuals of style. Examples of standards include the NFPA 70B Standard for Electrical Equipment Maintenance. The 70B is a document the authority having jurisdiction, AHJ, can use for enforcement of key maintenance requirements affecting safety. The 70B requires an electrical maintenance program. EMP to assure safe operation. Another example is the NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace. The 70E provides a document for employers to use to ensure safe work practices of employees. The 70E requires an electrical safety program, ESP, to assure safe work practices. The 70E requires you consider condition of maintenance as a key aspect of interacting with electrical equipment. A key aspect of both of these examples is that they both require the development of a program. In 70B, an electrical maintenance program is required, and in 70E, an electrical safety program is required. In our examples, we introduced another term, authority having jurisdiction, or AHJ. So who or what is the AHJ? The authority having jurisdiction is an organization, office, or individual responsible for enforcing the requirements of a code or standard, or for approving equipment, materials, an installation, or a procedure. It should be noted that the phrase authority having jurisdiction, or its acronym AHJ, is used in National Fire Protection Association standards in a broad manner because jurisdictions and approval agencies vary, as do their responsibilities, where public safety is primary. The authority having jurisdiction may be a federal, state, local, or other regional department or individual such as a fire chief, fire marshal, chief of a fire prevention bureau, labor department or health department building official, electrical inspector, or others having statutory authority. For insurance purposes, an insurance inspection department, rating bureau, or other insurance company representative may be the authority having jurisdiction. In many circumstances, the property owner or his or her designated agent assumes the role of the authority having jurisdiction. At government installations, the commanding officer or departmental official may be the authority having jurisdiction. Going back to our definitions for codes, standards, recommended practices, and guides, let's define recommended practice. Recommended practice is a standard similar in content and structure to a code or standard but that contains only non-mandatory provisions using the word should to indicate recommendations in the body of the text. And finally, what is a guide? A guide is a standard that is advisory or informative in nature and that contains only non-mandatory provisions. A guide may contain mandatory statements such as when a guide can be used, but the standard as a whole is not suitable for adoption into law. Now that we have a better understanding of codes, standards, recommended practices, and guides, let's look at how a Shaw and National Fire Protection Association standards relate to one another. But first, who is OSHA? With the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970, the United States Congress created the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, to ensure safe and healthful working conditions for working men and women by setting and enforcing standards and by providing training outreach, education, and assistance. OSHA and National Fire Protection Association standards are related in the context of electrical safety, but they have different roles. 
NFPA-70B and NFPA-70E are not codes or directly mandated by law, but they provide consensus requirements for safe electrical work practices. OSHA doesn't directly enforce NFPA standards, but it can use them as evidence of national industry consensus for safe practices. Non-compliance with NFPA-70B and NFPA-70E can result in an OSHA violation. OSHA references both NFPA-70, National Electric Code, and NEFPA-70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace, which in turn points to NEFPA-70B, Standard for Electrical Equipment Maintenance, for maintenance performed on electrical equipment and related systems. This has been a Safety Smarts presentation. Please discuss the points given with coworkers and your job team.